So you just felt like, I mean, the other champion versus champion fights we've seen, we've seen, you know, clean knockouts, a corner stoppage. You just wanted the opportunity to, you know, fight. If I'm going to lose, out. I want to lose. I want to lose if I'm going to lose. Look, congratulations, Henry Cejudo. Awesome. Great job, man. Awesome. You know, but you did not win. You did not win this fight. Um, I am happy to accept defeat, but I did not, I did not lose. Then what actually happened, TJ? There's a lot of controversy over last weekend's fight, Henry Cejudo versus TJ Dillashaw. And I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break down the whole fight, beginning to end, all the contact that was made, getting right into this, break this down, beginning to end, very, I'm gonna try to make this as comprehensive as possible. Feel free to rewind and shit. So we're gonna start off. TJ looks very, very predictable. He looks very similar to how he did in the Cody fight, where he comes out and he gets into the pocket, he gets into this position where he can get punched, but he doesn't, right? He moves his head a little bit, he does a couple feints, he, he tries to keep you on your toes and he does some lateral movement. Whereas with Henry, he comes out there and Henry has none of that. He knows what feints are happening, he touches hands, he goes for a kick to the body and then a straight left. When Cody's in this position, he doesn't do anything, right? He has the same window of opportunity, but he doesn't do anything, okay? And it seems like TJ's used to this. He's used to having, he opens himself up and then he resets. He opens himself up and resets and he tries to find the element of surprise somewhere in there so that you're not expecting. So right here, he throws a kick and then he throws another kick and then Henry crashes him. But pay close attention. TJ throws the kick, he lands back in position, and then he throws another kick, lands out of position, and as soon as Henry notices his feet are out of position, he pressures him, he makes him step back. Okay, look, bam. His feet, are, his foot is in position. He's, he's in good position, throws that kick, and bam, right there, his feet are out of position. And Henry immediately starts making him back up, puts the pressure on him. I don't know if you guys have ever been in a wrestling match or anything, but when someone does this, when someone, when someone reshoots on you, set up, level change, shoot, and you're attacking, and it doesn't work, and you're backing off, a lot of people will give you time to reset, will give you that second to breathe. But Henry's timing is on point, so he doesn't give you that second to breathe. He knows that when you're out of position, you need to attack. And this is like an oh shit moment. This sucks. Okay, getting reshot on, having that pressure put on you, may makes alarm bells go off in your head. It makes you think you're doing something wrong and you need to take control of the fight because you don't like what's happening. In my experience, wrestlers don't like having to back up. They really dislike it, actually. They'd rather have to circle or they'd rather step forward. So as you can see here against Cody Carbrandt, TJ gets out of position. Cody, he doesn't have to step back at all. And Cody actually lets him reset and start attacking. Whereas Henry doesn't do any of that. He sees him out of position. He pushes him back and he's the whole time looking for an opening, looking for his opening, okay? Boom, kicks him in the head. That was really quick. When I first saw the fight, I thought that didn't land, okay? So look, as soon as he touches hands, he uses that as a cue. He goes hand touch, kick to the body, straight to the head. All right, now TJ is thinking about that kick to the body and then getting punched in the head again. Henry uses that hand touch as a cue and instead of going to the body, he goes straight to the head and it lands flush, it lands clean. It, it's like only his hand was covering it. So his hand and his head took the whole impact of the punch, okay? Henry right back in his like karate stance and then he pushes TJ down, but notice what happened. TJ's getting pressured a lot. He got pressed three times already. Less than 15 seconds. He's been pressed and forced to move back. All right, this is not fun. In TJ's mind, he thinks I have to do something. I have to make something happen. He throws up a feint. Henry doesn't react. Henry doesn't react to any of his feints. He sees the jab coming from like a mile away parries and then slips the hook. This is beautiful. And he catches him right off balance and shoves him down. I don't know if you guys have wrestled before. I don't know if you guys have like any martial arts experience, but when you get pushed, the thing that is ingrained into your head is stay up, like stay on your feet. You know what I mean? So they train this all the time. They train getting pressed, getting off balance, getting pushed. That's basically all wrestling is, is staying on your feet, trying to get back, trying to get on top of someone, trying to control someone. You know what I mean? So to get pushed and fall to the ground, fall to a knee, not fall straight to like having your feet under you is very strange is very a wrestler of this high of level and caliber does not just get shoved to the ground and fall to a knee after he gets right back up he gets kicked in the head punch dropped and then he gets beat up real bad on the bottom henry keeps on creating space and just punching him in the head like and i'm telling you guys i have wrestled with a lot of good people and something that seems to amaze me with every single good wrestler every single high quality wrestler someone who went to state someone who wrestled in college and especially in the olympics especially in the olympics is the these guys are so goddamn strong. I am telling you, they could crush a watermelon in their hands. They could hold a watermelon and just it, it's a different kind. It's not a kind of strength that you get from lifting weights. It's not a kind of strength you get from farming or anything. This is like a freak kind of strength. And those punches, 
those short little punches hurt a ton. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of the time when a wrestler boxes his forms off, his hips and feet aren't behind the punches. A lot of the time it's not really good, but Henry's punches look good. Henry's form looks good. So let's start from right, right at the beginning. He pushes him down and kicks him in the head. T TJ blocks the kick with both of his hands, which is what you're supposed to do, but his hands still come to his head and make his head move a little bit. You can tell by how quickly he stands up, right? How quickly he's saying his head goes from right here to right here. He did eat some of that impact. And then this punch behind the ear is what pushes him over the edge. You guys have to remember this all happened within 20 seconds. As all this stuff happened very, very quick. TJ got punched in the jaw, punched in the body, set up, kicked in the head, kicked in the head, again and then punch behind the ear in order for him to drop in 20 seconds and these are hard i'm sure henry is trying to take his head off he gets punched behind the ear and he falls and notice he falls to a hand and then he drops to an elbow so for those of you that haven't wrestled that haven't done any sort of grappling sports the last thing you want to do is have your head on the mat the last thing you want to do is put your head on the mat this opens you up for choke this opens you up to get controlled you do not want to do this ever and like if i'm being taken down if i'm falling if i'm if basically if i see the mat go from far away to really close right that's what it looks like when you're falling the mat is really far away and then it gets really close and then you hit the mat if i see that i know I need to just straighten my hands right in front of my face because I do not want my face on the mat. I need to have a base. I need to find my base. TJ falling onto an elbow and onto his head is a very bad sign. That is bad wrestling, okay? That is just plain old bad wrestling. He is knocked out, okay? And you can see right here, Henry lands perfectly. He gets knocked down. Henry immediately spins behind. No effort, like there was no, there was nothing. He spins behind, gets the Western hook it looks like, and starts punching him in the head. He goes perpendicular and starts punching him in the head, creating space, trying to punch him in the head, trying to finish. TJ's focused on getting a leg while he's getting punched in the face. He's trying to focus on wrestling while he's getting punched in the face. Something you guys don't know. With wrestlers, you can wrestle knocked out. You can wrestle not seeing anything. You don't need to see to wrestle, okay? This movement, this movement of having, like the feeling of having someone's leg in between both of your arms or both the legs in between your arms is so ingrained into wrestlers' brains, they can do it in their sleep. That's why you see things like when uh, Edson Barbosa kicked Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee was knocked out. He wasn't seeing shit. He couldn't see shit. He was just like, all right, reach and go to rest. And like, he feels those legs and that's like a place of comfort for him. That's like something he's familiar with. You know what I mean? So TJ's trying to find that place of familiarity. He's trying to put his head on the outside, work a high crotch, do something. Okay, he's trying to spin behind because that's all he can think of when he's knocked out. He's aware that he's in a fight. He just has no real control of his body. And Henry is maintaining control, pushing him down, punching him in the face the whole time. Every time he tries to get up, he creates space and starts punching him again and again. Henry backs off from behind him, lets him up a little bit, holds his head, holds his head and goes bing, punches him square in the jaw. Okay, and these aren't no light punches, all right? And then TJ goes again for a single leg. He goes for the single leg, never locks his hands, all right? I don't know about you guys, but when I shoot a single leg, and that wasn't even a single leg just now, that was a high crotch. Dad, I'm in on a single leg. He shoots the high crotch, right? He's like this. I don't know about you guys, but when I try to take someone down, I try to control a leg, and you need to lock around the leg to do that. It needs to be boom. It's not just uh, 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 uh. And then you let go of it and you call that shooting for a single leg. As soon as he realizes that he's not getting a single leg, as soon as he realizes he's not getting that, there is no way in hell he was gonna get a takedown on an Olympic wrestler, okay? His wrestling is clearly much weaker than Henry. And Henry meets him with that pressure again. He starts punching him, clocking him in the face, clocking him, clocking him, clocking him. And then he gets knocked again. He gets knocked back down. And in my opinion, the third time someone falls to the mat, the second time they've been knocked down from punches, I think is okay to stop the match you just watched a man get pushed to the ground kicked in the head knocked back down stand back up and then get knocked down again get dropped again in my opinion much less happened in the cody garbrandt fight it would be different too if i got smoked and dropped like in the cody fight and we can compare that right here we're gonna start them both at the same spot the exact same spot okay right when he's slipping the punch right when henry's right when they're both slipping tj's punches 
okay okay so now you can see henry clearly spends a lot more time beating up tj than cody got because cody rocked him he was on the ground and then the round ended it took henry approximately 25 seconds to get to this point he maintains control of tj the entire time he spent more time actually punching tj because i included the push down but even if you start right where they connect right where they knock down tj okay look they both knock each other down you can see that henry clearly not only lands more punches remains in control for longer. TJ seems to be more conscious because his hand is always on the canvas, like looking to uh, post himself, while in the Henry fight, he goes straight to an elbow for a, like for a number of times. He falls to an elbow, he falls over. And in my opinion, it, it doesn't seem like TJ is defending himself intelligently. It looks like he's going completely off instinct, off like complete animal instinct. Oh shit, what am I doing? I have to like, I have to do something. Uh, I don't know, could they have stopped the fight later? Yes, but I think that they were in the window of time to like end the fight because I think showing how the fight was going before right how Henry didn't react to any of his feints how Henry knew it was coming how, how Henry landed almost every single punch he threw if it would have gone on another 15 20 seconds we would be arguing that it went on too long you know what I mean? TJ didn't show any signs of progress. It didn't seem like he was getting up. It didn't, like, he. it's not like he had a promising single leg. It's not like he had a promising double leg. It's not like he stood up and wasn't wobbling. It's not like he stood up and had his hands up and he, like, slipped a couple punches and then uh, Henry pushed him down again. No, he stood up, got knocked back out. So this narrative that the fight was stopped too early, like, it was stopped a little bit early, but realistically, Henry was in complete control of the entire fight. And what do you want the ref to do? He has a job to protect the fighter. If something were to happen to TJ, if he were to get a detached cornea and people start saying that he was in the fight too long, why didn't the ref stop it? Then that's his job. That's like his livelihood. You know what I mean? This is what he's hired to do is protect these fighters. You have to think like how he's thinking. Really quick story, just so you guys know, I am a little bit biased because as I used to wrestle with Henry's nephew, Adrian Cordova. We wrestled for like a very brief period of time and I don't even know if I actually wrestled with him because he was a 25, I was a 57 and there were like a bunch of people in between us. So I don't know if we actually ever wrestled, but I did hang out with him a little bit. Funny story actually, when I wrestled with him, we were in the beautiful state of Colorado. And if you know anything about Colorado, there's two things, weed's legal and it's cold as fuck. So one day, it's cold as fuck and we have our legal weed and we roll up four giant cigars. Fat, giant blunts, okay? I'm talking like this, okay? And we go outside and we're like, fuck this shit. We are not about to smoke all four of these outside in this freezing weather. So I'm like, all right, let's go in my car. We go in my car and like, we had this rule. It was like a stupid game. We're like, once you start the hot box, you cannot de-box. You cannot open the car at all. So like I sparked the first one, finish it, spark the second one, we finish it, spark the third one, we finish it. And like, as I'm about to spark the fourth one, you can hear Adrian in the back. Uh, uh, I need air. Just open the window. Just open the window. And I'm telling you guys, this fog was so thick. Scooby-Doo could come in here with a knife and cut the fog, take it out and take a bite out of it. And what happened was when I went to go spark the fourth one, when I, like, I was trying to light it, my lighter wasn't working. And what was happening was like the flame would start and then it would go like up halfway and then the flame would be stop right there, like at the top part, like only the red part. And all this would just be like gas. It wouldn't be like actual flame. And what happened was there wasn't enough oxygen in the car to actually keep the flame lit. That's what happened with me and Adrian one time. But until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.